Yeah, can you hold on one second? I just gotta, I gotta unfold my phone real quick. Weird flex, but okay. I feel like every week we get a new rumor that the Samsung Galaxy Fold is about to relaunch. Like it's coming soon. It's passed the tests. They finished the redesign. It's about to launch again. It's finally ready. Like at this point, I'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. But until then, since the Fold never is officially launched and Huawei's going through some things, this is the first and only folding phone to actually ship in 2019. This is it. This is the Royal Flex Pie. So I've taken a closer look at it. Technically we saw it briefly at CES in January, but that was barely hands-on. Like they let us see it and take videos of it, but every five seconds they'd take it out of our hands and show us how to use it correctly. So I feel like that barely qualified as a hands-on. Which like, I get it. That's your first way of showing the world what you've done. But now that I've got it, in the studio with no employees around me, I get to treat it like I treat every other phone that comes through here, normally. So the unboxing is pretty solid, kind of janky with the amount of poor translation happening in the box, but that's not what I'm judging. It came with a few accessories in there, which is nice, but I'm judging the phone here. And my first impression just of actually holding the phone for the first time is it's, uh, it's really weird looking, but I'll get more into that in a sec. Really the main thing to consider here is there's a couple different ways to do a folding phone. There's the way that folds out with the screen on the inside, and then there's the way to fold out with the screen on the outside. And the bottom line from what I'm getting with the FlexPie is the folding screen on the outside is not the way to go. So first of all, like we knew already, the flexible OLED panel, which is the most delicate part, is exposed to the elements all the time. It's not covered. Uh, it's also thicker because the components can't really completely fold flat onto each other. And unlike folding a piece of paper, the radius of this fold is still way greater than zero. It's much more of like a sharp curve than a fold, honestly. And so the whole thing becomes too chunky to reasonably fit in most people's pockets. It's like kind of like the size of the Seinfeld wallet, honestly. And a wallet for your money. Now, you know what? Maybe I can't judge the whole concept on this super early hardware. Like, so many pieces of this feel just like a hack. Like, look at this hinge. The most vulnerable, important part that isn't the screen, the hinge, it's literally covered in this, like, accordion-shaped rubber and then screwed in on the sides. It isn't smooth to fold and unfold. It kind of makes some noises sometimes when you touch it the wrong way while folding. And I just have my doubts about this material not wearing down over time with lots of folds and being in the sun and getting scratched and maybe even ripping. I mean, I guess technically the rubber on the back here is preventing debris from getting into the hinge and then maybe popping up under the screen. So that's their solution around that. But now your phone looks like an accordion. And also, I don't think there's any number of folds that this mechanism is rated for. Like the Galaxy Fold, which had that highly engineered hinge, we all saw the video where they claimed 200,000 folds by a robot and you know we saw how that went but this is not giving me the impression that it's more durable than that it really feels like a hack oh and then there's the crease so there were plenty of thoughts on the galaxy folds very slight crease from folding in the royal flex pie because of the way it folds out has two creases you can kind of see them like one on either side of this hinge <laughs> they try to play like you have three screens, one front, one back, and one side. Like they really told me that at CES, that this is a three screen phone and it's got this kind of awkward sliding shortcut UI in the middle on this third screen. Uh, it's not what I would call a third screen. But you know, with any folding phone, they're trying to make features that take advantage of this new form factor they've ended up with. And with this water OS on the Royal Flex Pie, uh, you know, there's a couple, there's not many. For example, you can turn on or off the back screen at any time if you want with a button that's permanently in the navigation bar. Uh, the front and back screen are also treated like two different user interfaces by remembering the state of your use separately. So if I'm on one screen and I open the settings app and then I flip it over and on that screen I open up the clock, when I flip back to the other side, the settings are still open. And when I you go back to the other side, the clock is still open as well. So I could see that separate use being somewhat useful if I get used to it. 
Kind of like how the Galaxy Fold treated the front and back screen as separate most of the time. Different wallpaper, different app layout, the whole thing. And then because of the dual camera layout, you can have the front and back of the phone show as a viewfinder while you're taking a photo. So the selfie shot with the main camera can be you know, a higher quality. And then people you're taking a photo of will see themselves in the back screen and probably look at that instead of the camera lens. And if you scroll far enough in the camera settings, there's something called baby mode, which uh, replaces that back screen with some entertaining cartoons and characters to get your baby to, I guess, look at the phone when you take pictures of him. Nice, so that's cool, I guess. But what this layout has really taught me is if you wanna take photos of something out there with the full viewfinder, you can't. There's no cameras on the back. They're all facing you. So you can't take photos of things that aren't you unless you close the phone. I think my favorite quirk though is that almost every version of auto rotate, almost every version works, ready? So this works, this doesn't work, this works, and this works. And then you fold it and you get this to work, this works, this doesn't work, then this does. Same thing on the other side. I don't know why it was so fascinating to me that you have like 16 ways to rotate it and like 14 of them work. Look, this is a super early folding phone and this is what you're gonna get when you rush to be first. Mission technically accomplished, you're first, but at what cost? Has it gotten better since CES? Actually, yes, uh, especially in the animations department. Uh, I still wouldn't call it fluid by any means. That's not a word I would use, but it's at least smoother than it was a few months ago. But uh, no matter how you move around this form factor, grabbing the screen from both sides and folding it in half, uh, at least on this phone, is incredibly awkward. Also, things like the volume buttons being split above and below the fingerprint reader, which is also not the power button, that doesn't help. Uh, the lack of headphone jack doesn't help. The noises you get sometimes when you fold it, that doesn't help. And of course, Water OS, uh, not having much English in it, no Google Play services, no Play Store, uh, that didn't help either. I'm not trying to put my SIM card in this phone and use it every day and have my information sent to who knows where. Um, I guess importing this phone was a bit of a hack in the first place. And all that is not to mention the battery concerns. When I first uh, booted up this phone, I got uh, a little bit of a walkthrough and part of that walkthrough said only to charge it while it's unfolded. I, I literally have no idea why. <laughs> Bottom line, this phone actually m just really makes me miss the Galaxy Fold. Like I already missed it when I had to give it back, but th <laughs> this really doubled those feelings. Now don't get me wrong, the FlexPi has flashes of brilliance. Like sometimes I just look at it in my hands and it's wild that you, you have a screen folded over backwards and still working perfectly and responsive and not broken. Like that's already amazing. I feel like you could show this to someone from five years ago and they'd be very impressed and surprised. But it also makes you think, what will these look like in five more years from today. Okay, I've learned two main things from playing with this phone. One, being first doesn't really matter if it sucks. Like, and that applies to a lot of other things, but especially with new tech and with this folding phone. But then two, folding in is better than folding out. Like folding out is cool and it, it looks potentially better. That Huawei Mate X that we've been drooling over because it seems to look so much better than the Galaxy Fold, I think it will look better but I don't think that's the way to use a folding phone. I think as long as the screens and the hinges are as shaky and not so durable as they are now, folding in is gonna be the better way. Also, don't forget about that Motorola Razr that's gonna sort of fold in if that ever happens. I think that's another good way to do it. But the whole folding out thing, probably not the way to go. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.